Clarity is an essential aspect of all writing. It means making sure a reader can easily understand your main points and arguments. In this presentation, we will discuss this essential rule for writing and its implied corollaries. Clarity begins with your sentence structure. If you have a confusing or awkward sentence, it's best to find its basic elements and write it in a simple subject-verb-object, or SVO, construction. Construct your sentences in this simple form to increase clarity. Start with the subject that performs the verb, then follow with the verb, and finally finish with the object which receives the action of the verb. Let's look at an example of the SVO construction. Bob hit the ball is a perfect example. Bob is the subject, hit is the verb, and the ball is the object which is being hit. A simple subject followed by an active verb followed by an object is the simplest and clearest form of a sentence. Let's see what happens when we change the order. The ball was hit by Bob complicates the sentence unnecessarily by switching the object and the subject and subsequently adding more words. While this formula is still grammatically correct, it's really ineffective, and obviously any other arrangement would sound unnatural and would be harder or impossible to understand. SVO implies at least three corollary principles. Specify the reality, omit needless words, and create a parallel structure, all of which we will discuss in the remainder of this presentation. Good writing is specific writing. It specifies the reality of the expressed concepts or situations. To become more specific, write with clear nouns and active verbs. Say what you mean and mean what you say. It's pretty clear, right? Focus on nouns and verbs, not adjectives or adverbs. Adjectives and adverbs are important, but they can get in the way of clear writing if you use too many. Consider this. Bob moved his wooden bat swiftly, hitting the oncoming ball. It's a decent sentence, but it's a little wordy, and not in simple SVO form. It's a little unclear what is happening. Now see the difference that writing with clear nouns and strong verbs makes. Bob cracked the ball with his bat. Now we know exactly what's going on. By focusing on nouns and verbs and following SVO, your sentences will become much clearer and more powerful. Don't be afraid to say what you mean and, again, mean what you say. After writing a sentence, ask yourself, is this what I really mean? Do the verbs demonstrate what actually occurred? Are the objects involved accurately represented by the nouns? Reduce the amount of the verbs to be, to do, to go, to have, and to get. These verbs are necessary at times, but often they fail to describe the true action. Consider this sentence. In order to go to the temple, Bob had to get over there on the bus and had to have faith. Now look at how much more descriptive verbs tighten the sentence. The detour required that Bob travel by bus to the temple, demonstrating his faith. Don't be afraid to be direct when expressing your ideas. If you beat around the bush, your argument loses its strength. Consider this sentence. I kind of think maybe we should go to the park. Okay, was that very persuasive? What about this one? We should go to the park, or even better, let's go to the park. By being direct, these sentences are a lot more powerful and convincing. To be specific, it is crucial to say what is instead of what is not. Avoid the word not whenever you can. Consider this sentence. We didn't eat for days. This is a wordy and indirect way of saying we starved. Oftentimes, using not results in a vague sentence. For example, he wasn't the strongest guy in the school. Well, this leaves a wide range of possibilities. Is he the second strongest? Is he the weakest? A better example is, he was weak. By saying what is, not what isn't, the sentence is clearer, more direct, and more powerful. Omit needless words to facilitate clarity in your writing. Oftentimes, that and there can both be eliminated. On some occasions, that serves a necessary role in the sentence, but most of the time, it only wastes space. Eliminate that whenever possible. Here's one sample sentence. He said that the rain poured. The that in this sentence is unnecessary. 
he said the rain poured. Hmm, that's much better, right? So eliminate there whenever possible as well. Especially avoid using there as a subject. Oftentimes we include there in a sentence unnecessarily as a fake subject coupled with a to be verb. There are, there was, there is. This is called a dead construction and is usually weak. For example, there were six mines in the harbor. You can make the sentence stronger by giving the sentence a clear subject instead of the there construct and using an active verb. For example, six mines blocked the harbor. Isn't that so much better? William Strunk Jr., a former English professor at Cornell, said writers should state coordinate ideas in similar form. When you make a list, make sure everything in that list is grammatically equivalent. For example, in the sentence, John hit the ball, ran around the film, and sliding it home, well, the verb sliding is different from the other two, hit and ran. By changing it to slid, the sentence flows much better. This is called parallel structure and is an effective way to organize lists. Consider this. I went with my dog for a walk, then I had to go inside to help in cleaning my house, and finally I got to play on the trampoline. Okay, that's long and wordy. By using parallel structure, we can condense these thoughts to make them clearer. For example, I walked my dog, cleaned my house, and finally bounced on my trampoline. Now I know what's going on. Elder Holland exemplifies all of these principles. He utilizes SVO structure, specifies reality, and omits needless words, and uses parallel structure. Note how he uses each of these principles in the following excerpt, and also note where he chooses to break each one. Never mind that their wives are about to be widows and their children fatherless. Never mind that their little band of followers will yet be houseless, homeless, and friendless and that their children will leave footprints of blood across frozen rivers and an untamed prairie floor. Never mind that legions will die and other legions live, declaring in the four quarters of this earth that they know the Book of Mormon and the church which it espouses it to be true. Disregard all of that and tell me whether in this hour of death these two men would enter the presence of their eternal judge, quoting from and finding solace in a book, which, if not the very word of God, would brand them as impostors and charlatans until the end of time. They would not do that. They were willing to die rather than deny the divine origin and the eternal truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. By following these guidelines, you will be able to make your writing clear and powerful.